Sometimes I'm referred to as an animation artist, which is fine, but it's like a lot of times I feel kind of like a carpet bagger when it comes to animation, like a newcomer, because honestly, even though I've designed for animation, I've done production design for, and character design for animation for like the last 20 years, I'm not a trained animator per se. I did the show Robot Monster. That was the first time I really created a look and a feel and I really got a chance to see and experience what's that like to get a team of people together and to make something amazing and to bring art to life. The one thing that I think benefited Robot Monster was the fact that there was probably about 10 years of ideas poured into that one show because if we wanted, I had sketchbooks full of ideas that I'd kind of always thought that would be cool, that would be cool. And so that became kind of the, the ground to, uh, to put everything into it. After that kind of introduction to animation, I wanted to go further with it. And so now I've been experimenting with stop motion animation. And I think the coolest thing to me is, is even though I'm, I'm kind of learning as I'm doing, which is kind of the way I've approached all of my art, all of my life, because I never went to art school, I have found that there's just a lot of pleasure in the same way I was talking about in sculpting, where you're taking something that's just an idea and making it real is that when you're doing animation, it's the same thing. You're bringing art to life. The most exciting thing about bringing art to life is just that since a lot of my ideas for characters and a lot of my paintings are based on characters, it's paintings and sculptures are all things that I've wanted to see in 3D or I've wanted to see realized. And so to then have that next step achieved where now I can take a robot sculpture or a character and actually have it walking around and talking and doing, that seems to be the next big step for me. I think the reason I really like the idea of bringing life to my art is that all of my character work and a lot of the stuff I did in the 100 Robots book has a lot to do with just telling simple stories with characters or telling or having a simple joke with, uh, with one or two characters. And so I'm not a writer. And the thing is, is I always loved, you know, working with writers, but I just, I've tried writing. It's really difficult. <laughs> if I personally back away from the idea of writing and just getting a storytelling, you know, because one of the things you want to do is, is, is if somebody looks at a painting or a sculpture, at least have them come up with a narrative of, this is what I think that guy is, or this is what I think that character is doing, or that's, that's how these people relate to each other. So with this, now I'm finally getting a chance to bring it to life. What, you know, what are the jokes? What are the stories to tell uh, with these characters? And, and I'm, I'm trying a lot of stuff right now without dialogue. And so, and of course, I'm doing a lot of robot stuff. I think it also is gonna lend itself to um, one of my other favorite mediums, which are kind of old school picture books like the old school picture books that used to have lenticular 3D in them and everything like that. So I still think that I would love to try that sometime is to make sets, sculpt characters, make those old school storybooks, or even like the old Viewmasters. Like the old Viewmasters were cool. Those were like sculpted and built. Those were models and characters. And that still excites me too. So, so there's something about digital, which makes it much more doable to do animation, to do photography, is I feel like I can kind of do a lot of these things all within a one-stop shop, under one roof.